Hello everyone, welcome back to another session on dentistry and more. Today we have a nerve block that is intraorbital nerve block. So it is a maxillary nerve block which is given just below the orbit. That is why it has got this name intraorbital. Before moving on, we need to understand a little bit about the nerve anatomy. So we have the fifth cranial nerve that is trigeminal nerve has got three divisions the ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular. So this intraorbital is a part of maxillary nerve. So you can see the maxillary nerve here. So it has got many branches. So you can see the uh, posterior superior alveolar nerve, anterior superior alveolar nerve the middle superior alveolar nerve then the infraorbital nerve and which has got the terminal branches which is emerging from the infraorbital foramen that is uh, palpebral branches nasal branches superior labial branches and you can see towards the posterior side uh, it is uh, going to the temporal region and that is zygomatic or temporal and zygomatico facial nerve so this is just the anatomy and the distribution of the nerve so understanding this will help you to get the idea about the anesthetized area because we are going to apply the anesthetic solution here that is the infra orbital region so it will definitely anesthetize these three parts that is the terminal branches then the anterior superior alveolar nerve and then the middle superior alveolar nerve because these three are the main branches which is after the intraorbital foramen so this uh, anterior teeth so we have one two three that is the central incisor canine and the lateral incisor is supplied by anterior superior alveolar nerve whereas the uh, premolars 4 5 and the mesio buccal root of 6 supplied by middle superior alveolar nerve and the other molars that is 7 and 8 that is second molar and third molar also the roots which is except that is a disto buccal and palatal root of six that is the first molar supplied by posterior superior alveolar nerve okay now so this is how the nerve supplies the teeth pulp and periodontium central lateral canine is supplied by anterior superior alveolar nerve which is the anterior most branch then the middle superior alveolar nerve which is supplying two premolars and the mesiobuccal which is near to the premolar mesiobuccal root of first molar the remaining that is second and third molar along with the other roots other than mesiobuccal that is the distobuccal and palatal roots so when we apply local anesthetic injection so we are going to anesthetize these many teeth so it will anesthetize definitely anterior superior alveolar nerve so infraorbital sometimes known as anterior superior alveolar nerve but most of the cases middle superior alveolar nerve also will be anesthetized but in 20 percentage cases it will not be anesthetized in those cases we need to give a separate middle superior alveolar injection for the procedure so moving on intraorbital nerve block so the aim is to deposit anesthetic solution into the intraorbital canal through the intraorbital foramen okay so in this technique as i said it will anesthetize anterior superior alveolar nerve and also middle superior alveolar nerve and along with the branches okay 
so the terminal branches of intraorbital nerve they are inferior palpebral the lateral nasal and superior labial terminal branches they are lateral nasal so you can see the picture here superior labial that is above the lip then inferior palpebral just below the eyelids so these are the nerves anesthetized when we apply intraorbital nerve block so what are the areas to be anesthetized so the areas as as we can uh, imagine this is being deposited just side of the nose below the eyes on one side so this will anesthetize upper lip not bilaterally only on one side the lateral aspect of nose on the injection side that is the lateral part and the lower eyelid and also the buccal mucosa of the upper anterior teeth and premolars and the pulp and investing structures of these upper anterior teeth and premolars and mostly the mesio buccal root of first molar so these are the areas anesthetized these are the nerves anesthetized okay so now what is the position of the patient and dentist so patient position uh, as you see the picture here head neck and trunk on the same straight line okay and the back of the chair is tilted so that the patient is in a supine position the occlusal pla plane of the maxillary teeth are and at a 45 degree angle to the floor so it should be a supine position the maxillary occlusal plane should be 45 degree angle to the floor and we can uh, start giving the procedure whereas a dentist position stands on the right side in front of the patient for a right side injection and alongside the patient for a left side injection and mostly the armamentarium or needle commonly used is 25 to 27 gauge and it will be definitely a long needle this are the armamentarium 25 to 27 gauge long needle now what are the landmarks so landmarks will guide us to give the injection at exactly uh, the intraorbital region or exactly where it is intended to so anatomical landmarks are the supra orbital notch you can see the picture here and the intraorbital notch then the intraorbital depression intraorbital depression then the anterior teeth and pupils of eye so we need to visualize a imaginary straight line which is passing through the supraorbital foramen intraorbital foramen and mental foramen okay so this three will be passing through a straight line and we need to visualize the area which is near to just below the orbit lateral to the nose uh, at the depression okay so first thing is we need to start using our thumb we need to feel the depression which is the intraorbital depression and the line we need to visualize imaginary visualization and we need to visualize the uh, we need to feel the intraorbital depression where the intraorbital foramen is located next the needle pathway so needle pathway of insertion so how we are going to insert the needle into the mucosa approaching the 
infraorbital foramen so we have got two methods one is a bicuspid method and the next one is central incisor method so bicuspid method is uh, so commonly used one because it is uh, going just above the premolars that is a straight line we are keeping our needle in a straight line and we are approaching the infraorbital foramen we'll deposit around 2 ml of solution by inserting the needle 5 mm into the mucosa but uh, we should never go more than 3 fourth of the needle length whereas a central incisor approach it passes through the mucosa and areolar tissue okay it is like uh, we have the central incisor here will this is the ankle we have two central incisor okay this is a lateral incisor and this is canine so we aim from the mesio incisal angle to the distal cervical ankle and we aim the sorry so we aim the needle at a 45 degree or at a ankle towards the this is our target area intraorbital region okay so you can see the picture here this is a central incisor approach this is two ways of approaching sorry uh, next one is a parallel approach that is through the premolars okay so through, through the premolars let it be here through the premolars it is going almost parallel without any angulation almost parallel to the premolars this is making an angulation and approaching the infraorbital foramen so what are the indications uh, of infraorbital nerve block that is a dental procedure involving uh, more than two maxillary teeth and other buccal tissues that is central canine uh, even premolars uh, we can do using infraorbital or any other uh, inflammation or infection procedures or when supraperiosteal injections have been ineffective because of this dense cortical bone so there is dense cortical bone is present so this supraperiosteal injections might not be effective at times so in those times we can directly go for the block contraindications uh, some procedures it requires just supraperiosteal injection in those cases uh, we don't need to uh, go for intraorbital and any localized uh, indication also we can avoid intraorbital instead we can give for a infiltration now we have the uh, symptoms so the symptoms uh, subjective symptoms what the patient tells you uh, patient uh, tells uh, tingling and numbness of the upper lip side of the nose and one part of the uh, the inferior uh, eyelid area whereas objective symptoms are a patient might not feel any pain during the instrumentation okay so complications involve the hematoma and facial nerve paralysis so these are the complications associated with intraorbital nerve block so it's a very commonly asked essay question in oral surgery paper so we need to write about its indication contraindication its side effect two methods of pathway of insertion that is the central incisor and bicuspid approach the amount of solution injected and the needle uh, the length of the needle to be inserted it should not go beyond three fourth of the length then the landmarks so probital notch infraorbital notch infraorbital depression anterior teeth and pupils of the eye and in the beginning part we need to explain a little bit about the infraorbital foramen and its branches that is anterior middle superior lunar and all those things 
so you need to draw pictures and explain the intramuscular nerve block so along with that you need to explain about the area anesthetized and the nerve anesthetized so i'll come up with the middle superior alveolar nerve in my next session thank you